So my name is Brian Nice and I'm a photographer and we're getting ready to go on a great trip to Greenland. It's a journey with my father. Um, it's kind of a trip that I, I've, always, I've always wanted to go on a specific trip with him to do a specific thing and have him paint and me photograph because he's like, he, my dad's my mentor as far as my creativity. He, um, I, you know, I think of him all the time when I'm working and, and what, he, what he's always taught me and I've always wanted to do a trip with like a, a certain focus in mind and, and you know, this Greenland trip I think is a, is a great opportunity. I think the idea of, 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 of the iceberg being an object and floating the way it does and only seeing, we only see the surface of things. Like on the Hudson River when we have the, the Hudson Highlands, when the Highlands come down like this, they're obviously the, the, the mountains don't stop when it meets the water, so that you have this whole sense of, of the greater part of the iceberg being under the water. And so you have this notion of the thing floating and the idea of it disappearing. And, and every single iceberg is unique. It was his idea to, um, to capture uh, icebergs. It was his idea to do that. Um, he was inspired by um, Frederick Church, who had gone um, up to Newfoundland, I believe, and, and he, he, um, he painted icebergs. This was back in the 1800s, and my dad was intrigued with that. When I talk about the sublime and what Frederick Church was after was the light, <clears throat> and that certainly when light strikes this, this ice, I mean, it just, he describes as being at the top of the iceberg, it's like, it's very brittle. And then, of course, as it, as it gets near the ocean, it, it becomes very um, curvilinear and voluptuous and, and melting. So you have those two things. In any, any kind of painting that's really worthwhile is you have a dialogue going on between, between curves, straight lines, dark, light, warm, cool. You have that kind of thing going on. Hopefully my work in its total, uh, total scope is what I've been trying to do is raise people's consciousness about things around them. There's a certain mentality that, that I think has to get out of the car, take their shoes off and sense the earth, you know, because we are, I'm not trying to preach, but we are, we know we are here, we are part of the earth. We're not above it or we're not, we try to control it, but it's, it's, we can see it in global warming, you know, it's just people have denied the fact that this is happening, but it in fact is happening. It has happened and continue. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a process. I mean, nowadays especially, it's important that we, you know, we've become so disassociated with the environment. You know, we used to be part of the environment you know, a long time ago, and, and now we're so removed from it. Um, and um, we look at it as like an outside thing, but it should be really part of us. Uh, and I think that if I could, you know, if I could just bring that to someone just for a moment, a landscape, that's um, you know big. It feels like they could walk into it. Maybe they can just make that connection. Um, you know, just to make people think about it, just for a few minutes. I think it's it's really important. The more the that that people in the creative field can bring people's awareness. I don't I don't like to think of art as being a tool of propaganda because I think that's wrong. If one thinks of 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 Picasso and of Guernica, that, that's a great painting. It's a great painting, but it's also about this, the, the, the brutality of war. So there's certain artists who can bring those two things together, but just to go out and do a, a piece of, um, what, illustration showing, you know, the worst devastation, I don't think really, really makes the point. If I have a goal is try to bring people into focus with the earth forces, Earth, fire, wind, and water, and gravity, and that's what I've been dealing with. And everything you look around here is dealing with that, with that, with that very thing, and dealing with it in a way that encompasses uh, Eastern art and Indian art and and um, uh, every kind of, of art that, uh, that that has come from the earth. It's it's capturing uh, not only a moment, but the image itself. Like going back to the iconic image, the. The, the thing, the item, the, you know, the coastline, the landscape, the field, uh, the tree or the trees. 
um, they become singular objects and um, that's that's kind of what I try to capture the and I, I'd like to keep some sort of drama or contrast in the lighting and just to contribute to the overall feeling of the image. My family's very much into um, the environment and uh, the Natural Resource Defense Council and, and bringing people's awareness, you know, to what's going on in our environment. And right now, the, you know, the icebergs are disappearing. They're just melting like crazy. So we thought it would be, it just kind of felt right. You know, it all kind of came together and that trip seemed like it would be the perfect thing to do together. So that's, it was, it was his idea to, to do it. And then, and it's funny because I had been there actually 20 years ago, this, this place where we're going. And um, the minute he mentioned, oh, we should photograph and paint icebergs, I was like, I know where to go. <laughs> so Brian's made, made the arrangements for us to go up and to fly up. And the first day we're going to go out and, and um, uh, on a boat and, and get as close as possible as we can to the icebergs. Next day we're going to take a helicopter and see the, the glacier. And uh, next day we're going to take a, take a, again, take the boat out and, and, uh, and paint and he can photograph. I imagine, well, I was there, yeah, 20 years ago. It's got to have changed a lot. I, I'm not sure what has changed, but 20 years is a long time, you know. Or maybe not, who knows, maybe it hasn't changed much at all. It's a very, very small town, a um, hundred miles north of the Arctic Circle. And it's just located right at the base of um, this beautiful glacier that just uh, spits out icebergs into, you know, into the bay there. It's like, it's like the reason I'm going to Greenland and to paint the icebergs is, is for that, that contact rather than doing paintings of icebergs as paintings, as objects, you know, to hopefully they'll, they'll find a market somewhere, but, but the, the, the issue is whether or not you go there to have the experience and to enlarge your vision, or whether you go there to make a product, you know. This trip is kind of an extension of the way I've been living as a kid with my, with my dad. Um, it's, it's a continuation of what you know, I've always been doing with my dad, but this is a specific purpose. And whereas before it was just everyday life, you know, um, you know, you pull over and he'd do a painting, and I'd take a picture when we're together, or um, or I would do a little sketch. But this is like a specific goal. It's daylight 24/7 pretty much. So, <laughs> you know, we we're they're only there for three days. So, but I, you know, since it's daylight most of the time, you can just stay up the whole time if you want, I guess. Um, I'm just going to try to pack in as much as we can, um, rent a boat, and whenever we can, go out on uh, trips and maybe go for some hikes. There is an area where you can go up and back of the village and, and hike, so um, I remember that, so hopefully we can do that. There's a lot of stories that this place, if you think about Old Green and in the old days, this place was one of the, the, the best places to live in because of the ice. So the ice creates a lot of life, not only on the water, but also by, by uh, the people lived here. The locals have noticed the weather changes that we are seeing. Also, we are, as local people, trying to tell people from outside ordinary people and of course politicians from the United States or Europe that uh, it is true that it's, we have all these effects. Well the iceberg is, uh, you, 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 you always see it outside your window and you don't really think about the beauty or what, what it creates, it's just there and I think it's it will be noticed when it's gone and of course in my opinion if, if it's gone because of global warming people really ask themselves what happened what what good things did we have from the iceberg it has always been there as long as we lived people today doesn't really know that it creates a lot of life underneath 
the iceberg because there's so much oxygen on the iceberg and all that oxygen creates a lot of fish that's why we have so many halibut fishing and but today we, we notice also the, the icebergs are getting smaller and smaller than for about 15 years ago. Yeah, the first day we got here, um, the minute we got here, we pulled up and it was overcast and you know, amazing light. So the first thing we did was book a, uh, a boat like right away. Even though it wasn't chartered, we thought we got to get this, this light in. So we, we chartered a boat and headed out there. So we pretty much got right into it uh, the minute we got here. The first thing you, you know, we noticed is just the air is just so clean. I mean, that sense, your senses just hit you. It's amazing. That, that's really a beauty. That's, that's a prize winner right there. Mm -hmm. The icebergs are smaller than what I remember. I, when I was here 20 years ago, they were huge. They were gi they were like skyscrapers. They were gigantic, but they're. I just noticed that's the first thing that I noticed is they're smaller. They're um, they're definitely smaller. I was talking to David, the captain, and he said, "Yeah, they're over the years they've become smaller but more frequent because the ice pack is moving faster and faster. It's coming down faster, they're breaking off faster, and they're melting faster. So because of that, they're, um, they're a little smaller. My name is David in Carlsen, I'm living, born and raised in Idrisse. Yes, the, uh, the velocity of the ice uh, in this area has been measured to be about 35 meters a day now during this time of the year. Just one year ago, the velocity of the ice was measured to be between 18 to 24 meters a day, but now it's, it has been increased Sorry. to the 35 meters a day. Quite out here. I don't like it. You can only hear the melting of the ice. When, one morning um, we had free, so we hiked about a 45 minute hike to the edge of the glacier and, and that was fantastic too. I mean, it was also an amazing day because it was really overcast and ethereal and foggy. Um, so it just added to the whole mystery of the whole you know, feeling there. And uh, it was exciting because you could actually walk down the rocks. You okay? You want me to take your bag? No, I'll take your bag. I don't think you want this one. <laughs> Here, give me your bag. No, give me it for a while. That's all right. right. I'm balanced. Here you go. Sure? Yeah. I mean, I don't walk as fast as these young guys, so I, I was, I said, like, come back, come back here and look at this little flower. And they really, the flowers were magnificent. I mean, the little small little guys like this, but they really, because of all the grayness of the rocks and so on, they just blossom and stand out. And I think just the range of, for me, the range of greens going from cool to warm to large to small and so on. So um, I think, again, going back to sensibility here, people are really, that's what they have to look at. They have little blue flowers that are about a, an inch across rather than huge, you know, sunflowers like we just got back from France, you know. So they, they um, and they appreciate them and they take care of them. And, uh, especially, and little herbs, little berries and so on. And uh, it was exciting because you could actually walk down the rocks, um, like right to the edge of the ice pack, which you're really not supposed to do, I guess, but <laughs> we did. And uh, it was spectacular. I mean, to just stand right at the edge as, you know, this ice is moving past, that was pretty amazing. Yeah, what struck me when we took this hike, you went down a hill and then you came up through the saddle of, it's a saddle of like a ridge. And as you came up over the ridge, all of a sudden you were just like hit with a, a field of ice, like the glacier was right there in front of you in between the saddle. And that, you know, that ridge line just compressed and made it so dramatic, the, the glacier it just like stood out at you. It was incredible. It was like breathtaking the view. And um, we came up over that ridge and uh, set up there, did some stuff. And then my dad painted up there and I went down uh, towards the edge where I could uh, get that contrast of the rocks that have been polished by the glacier and the glacier in the, in the background. 
which was uh, real, that contrast again is, is pretty wild. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to stay right here. It's pretty slippery. You know, Greenland is like a giant salad bowl and we're just on the edge and the middle is this gigantic ice pack and the only way you can really see that is that helicopter ride. We went up this valley and then all of a sudden we were up on the ridge of, you know, the salad bowl. <laughs> And we were overlooking this, this huge mountain of ice. It just went as far as the eye could see. And then this glacier is just one tiny little, you know, outlet for that, for that ice pack to come down and meet the sea. And um, when you got up there, you're just like, whoa. <laughs> you just realize that this is just one tiny little, you know, speck of what's, what's out there. 